Kevin Carmichael is an author, speaker, and YouTuber who Gary Vee called the content DJ that inspired people. He went from making $300 per month and being introverted and shy to having 300 million people watching his YouTube videos. So today, let's learn the number one thing that you need to start doing. Mentor me, Evan! Okay, let's kick it off with rule number one. Do difficult things. You love difficult things. You do. Difficult things are amazing. Difficult things are the best. Difficult things are the only way that you grow. Think about it. What's the opposite of difficult? Easy, safe, inside your comfort zone, boring. The single greatest thing that you can ever do for your confidence is teach yourself that when things get difficult, you don't shrink down, you rise to the occasion. So in my keynote presentations, I used to always use slides as well. I had PowerPoint up and, and I wouldn't read the text off of the slides, but I have a picture and I tell a story about it and it would always keep me focused on where my presentation was going. And then I got offered to do a speaking gig in Paris. I was the keynote speech at this big event for this software company and I was gonna close the show for them. And I had this idea in my head that what if I didn't do slides? What if I spoke on stage for, I forget how long, 45 minutes to an hour, closing keynote, and I just had one slide and it was a picture of a rabbit because I was telling a story about trying to teach a rabbit to climb a tree. And it scared me. I thought it's difficult. And because that's what I thought, then I had to do it. Because in my head is, well, what if I don't remember where I go? What if I forget the stories? What if I lose track of where I'm at and I'm sitting here on stage, the closing keynote, been paid all this money to come and I just suck. <laughs> and because that was the reason that I had to do it, I had to do it. And so I said, I'm just gonna have one slide. And when the tech team said, hey, what do you wanna show on screen? Here it is, it's just one slide, yep. No videos, nope, no audio, nope. One slide, that's it, put that up. And I practiced and I practiced and I practiced and, and because my greatest fear in the world is disappointing people, I probably over practiced and had my speech down and I went and, and crushed it. But even if I didn't, it was the willingness to try. It's the willingness to do difficult things that as soon as you feel yourself playing potentially small based off of something being difficult, that means it's go time. That means you have to do it because teaching yourself that you think of something that's big and scary and then you crouch down and you shy away and you don't do that, that's, that's an ongoing lesson that you are teaching yourself that you suck. You're telling yourself, if I went and said, hmm, what about doing just one slide? in France, right, for my Paris keynote. What if it's just one slide and I'm scared of it and I don't do it, I'm teaching myself that I suck. That's what you do. Anytime you approach something big and you don't do it, you're telling yourself you're not capable. You're, you're telling yourself that you suck. And so everybody else might let you off the hook. You may not even tell anybody else about this crazy idea that you have, but you playing small is not acceptable. When something is difficult, you have to attack it head on. Now I've got a three-step process that I think will help you take on difficult challenges. Step number one is watch your language. Anytime you hear yourself saying difficult, scary, or hard, that means it's go time. Why are you not doing the big things in your life? Well, it's difficult, it's scary, it's hard. That's not an acceptable answer. Nope, not anymore, not for you. You love difficult, you do scary, you embrace hard. It's the best, all of it, right? So anytime you hear yourself talking your thoughts you know, in your head while you're not doing something, or you actually hear it coming out of your voice. You can even tell your friends, your family, your coworkers, the people around you, say anytime that I say difficult, scary or hard, I want you to catch me. I want you to grab my arm and say, you just said scary. <laughs> and use that as a trigger, go time. This is go time. Because most of the things you're afraid of are just disappointing people. It's failing in front of people. It's your thing not working out. Yes, don't go jumping from your balcony because it's it's scary, right? Like, be safe. But most of the things that <laughs> you're afraid of are not actually life-threatening. Most of the things that you are afraid to take on are not actually life-threatening. And so it's go time. Difficult, scary, hard, not acceptable anymore in your vocabulary. When you hear yourself say that, think that, feel that, you have to go take action. Step number two is tell yourself that this is just a warm up. Anytime you are facing a difficult situation, remind yourself, this is just the warm up. When you feel like you're stretched to the max, when you feel like you can't handle anymore, just that mindset shift to say, this is just a warm up. I'm capable of way more than this. This is not my max effort. I can do better puts you in a state of resourcefulness that will allow you to do more. People use this in the gym as an example. So when they're going to the gym and, and they're, they're, you know, they're pushing weights or they're on their bike, 
when they feel defeated, when they feel that it's over, if you just tell yourself, this is just a warm-up. This is just a warm-up. I can do way more than this. What it does is allow you, it tricks your brain. It allows you to push an extra set. It allows you to go an extra five, 10, 15 minutes on the bike. It allows you to push harder because you're telling yourself that you're capable of more. The same thing applies to your business goals, to your personal goals, to your life. When it's getting difficult, when you're on stage and your PowerPoint dies, when you're faced with this crazy situation that is outside your control, tell yourself, this is, this is just a warm up. I'm just getting started. I'm capable of way more than this. And step number three is it's the best. Because difficulties actually are the best. Because that thing that you're struggling with so much will become a story, will become the thing that you tie your identity to. Mel Robbins being on stage in our PowerPoint failing and then having to do five extra minutes without any power becomes a story, it becomes the best. The challenges that you go through become the best, become the path that you can then help other people through. Humans are built to serve. Well, how are you gonna serve? You're gonna serve the people who are facing the same difficulties that you faced. And so without going through difficulties, you're not gonna be able to serve to the fullest capacity. And so the challenges that you're going through right now are the best, you want the challenges. You don't want the boring life. And so teach yourself, this is the best. This nasty problem that I'm going through right now that I wouldn't wish upon my enemy, I wouldn't wish upon you know anybody in my life, it's the best, let's go. And it may not actually be you know the best right now, whatever you're dealing with, but even just that mindset trick to say, this is the best. It puts you in a state of resourcefulness so that you can go handle the problem. So that you can make yourself proud because that negative, toxic, difficult situation that you are facing right now will define you, will define you. Either you succumb to it and you never get back off the mat and do it again, or you rise above it. And then you help all these other people rise above it as well. Also, if you want to have more confidence and motivation, check out our 254 series. The link is in our description below. Surround yourself with greatness. If you want to be more confident, you need to surround yourself with things that make you feel confident. Smash all of those things together because that's the unique thing that only you can do. Because your book has come out, it doesn't mean you should stop marketing. It's not just about week one when it just comes out. It's constantly marketing, 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 marketing. Rule number two, make sacrifices. There will be moments in your business where you will need to have superhuman strength to keep going where it just demands everything from you, every single ounce that you have. But if you need to have superhuman energy every single day, you're gonna burn out and fail. So whenever I wanna try something new, when I'm testing something new, I always eat into some of my reserves. It may mean to go off and do this new project, I'm gonna sleep less or spend a little bit less time working on my book or a little less time working on my YouTube channel, right? You eat into these reserves, but that's not sustainable. If that's what you're doing constantly, you're gonna be unhappy, you're gonna burn out, you're gonna fail. So a quick example, uh, Sadhguru came to Toronto. Sadhguru, if you don't know, he's a yogi, he's an Indian mystic. We did a top 10 on him. He then invited me to come to his event in Toronto and then do a one-on-one -on -one interview with him uh, close to the Toronto airport, the island. It was amazing, great time. Out of that, he says, Evan, I want you to come to my multi-day event in the US. I want you to come, be a VP guest there. It'd be amazing to have you. Awesome. But before you do that, you have to do my seven day program where you have to meditate every day for seven days. And I think it's an hour plus every day. I didn't have an hour a day, right? I mean, that's not part of what I had in my calendar. Every hour in my calendar is accounted for. It doesn't mean I'm working all that time, but I might be spending time with my wife. I'm be spending time with my son. Every, every hour is accounted for. And so to do this, I had to eat into some of my reserves. And so for that one, I asked Nina, I said, Nina, if you're gonna come with me, you have to do this too. Do we want to spend our hour in the evening instead of watching a show, instead of relaxing, to, to do this program for seven days for meditation? And she said, yes. And so here's the thing. We did it for seven days and we went to the event. It was awesome. If it was something that we were going to continue, if we were gonna meditate every day for an hour ongoing, then I'd have to readjust my schedule. Your success comes from your habits. You need to figure out what a balanced life looks like for you. Now, ultimately, I don't meditate an hour every night. I do some healing meditation for my neck every morning, but that habit didn't stick and that's okay. So when you're testing new habits, testing new ideas, testing something for your business or some emergency comes up that you have to deal with, it's gonna tap into your reserves. 
you can't be running your business at full capacity already. You can't be running your business on zero, on empty, because that means there's no extra gear. That means that when life punches you in the face, you can't handle it. That means if you want to try or taste or test something else, you can't do it because you have no reserves. You have no battery. There's no more gas in the tank. And so that's where a lot of entrepreneurs live. That, that's where it's really troublesome. That's where a lot of entrepreneurs will end up burning out, failing, and crushing their dreams because you're just running with no gas left in the tank. And so you can stretch yourself. I think that's normal. I think that's okay. I think life will hit you in the face. And just when you think it couldn't get worse, here comes another punch. That will happen. But it's making sure that you can live that balanced life, whatever balance looks like for you. So how do you handle these things when they come up? I'm going to give you a three-step process that I think will help. Step number one is tell yourself it's the best. When life punches you in the face, when you get some crisis that happens, I try to run a no crisis business, but that is not always possible. Stuff will still happen, and if it's not in your business life, it'll happen in your personal life. When life punches you in the face and you can't get out of it and you have to address it, you have to deal with it, instead of living in the land of negativity and complaining and why me and despair and, and desperation, I flip it. I complain for eight and a half seconds and then say, this is the best. This is the, it's the best. This is the best thing ever. Because what it does is it puts you in a state of resourcefulness. It puts you in a place where you can then go and solve the problem. So I'm going to meditate for an hour a night. This is the best, right? I'm sitting next to the smelly dude on the airplane. It's the best because what's the alternative? You're stuck next to the smelly guy on the airplane. What's the alternative? The alternative is you sit on the plane and you, you're upset and you freak out and you complain and you're negative and grumpy and unhappy. And that's not going to allow you to create beautiful, amazing things for your business or your life. So when you're forced into that situation, when, when life hits you by surprise, tell yourself this is the best. This is your chance to prove to yourself and the world what you're actually made of. Step number two is if this is an ongoing problem, then you need to fix your life. Right? If it's every single day that this is happening, then you can't tell yourself it's the best every day because it's the best allows you to tap into those reserves. It allows you to find that extra little bit of juice in the gas tank to keep going and solve this big problem. But if it's every day that you're stressed out to the max, that you're not sleeping, that you have no energy, that you're hating the work that you're doing, you need to fix your life. You can't get up every day and just tell yourself it's the best because you're going to run out of energy. There's no reserves left. You will fail. You will disappoint yourself. You will just run out. And so you are what you consistently do. You look at your calendar and there's something in there that is broken. You need to fix your life if every day you are stressed out. And then step number three is schedule for success. So, so your habits will dictate your success. Your actions need to map to your ambitions. What balance looks like for you needs to be reflected in your habits. You can say, here's what balance looks like for me, but if you're not living it, you're not going to be happy and you're going to run out of energy and you're going to burn out and you're going to start to hate your life. So what does a balanced life look like for you? How much time do you want to spend with your family, with your significant other, on your business, on yourself, personal development, uh, working out, singing, hobbies, dancing, friends, whatever it is that you want to do. What does a balanced life for you look like? And this is something that only you can judge. What I do, what The Rock does, what Sadhguru does, what Dan Locke does, what anybody that we profile, whatever they do, what Elon Musk does. Don't compare yourself to Elon Musk and his schedule. You can use his schedule as guidance, as an idea, as here's something that somebody is doing that is possible, but maybe that's not for you. You try on the hat, and then you see. So you have to decide what does balance look like for you and then take out your calendar every day of the week from Sunday to the next Sunday and put everything in. Here's how much time I want to spend on these different activities. Because if you want balance and it looks like this and then you look at your calendar and it's totally different, you're going to run out of energy and not like your life. Schedule for success. And rule number three, the last one before a very special bonus clip is expect the hard times. The difference between outstanding and average is what you do when it gets hard. People with an average mindset only do things when it's easy. Because it's easy. Anyone can do it. But life is coming for you. Setbacks, they're coming for you. And that's what separates the average from the outstanding. Your goals, they don't count until it's hard. So I had a new guy on my team who was writing to me to say, Evan, it's super important, this is urgent. I need help with my schedule. I'm just not staying consistent. I'm not staying on my goals. I know what I want to get done for you, but also for my life. And, and it's not, unless it's some deadline or you're on me, it's not happening. I'm not consistent on it. How do, how do I get going? How do I stay consistent? 
And so we worked together through the schedule and we created his calendar and said, what are your goals? And put it in your calendar and how do you want each day to go? And he, he plotted out his Saturday to Sunday, you know, the whole week. And then I asked him, okay, now put in your morning routine. What do you want to do every day? Right, so he, he plotted that into his calendar. Now he's got this weekly schedule of what he's going to do every morning and then every day doing different things and how he wants his ideal life to go. Awesome. And then I told him what really mattered. Like, this is great. Your actions map to your ambitions, it's really important. But following through on your calendar doesn't count until it's hard. Maybe, maybe today is gonna be easy for you. Maybe tomorrow's easy for you because we talked, because you're motivated, because you're inspired. It's like, yeah, 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 I'm gonna go do it. Awesome. What happens when you don't sleep well? What happens when something happens in your family? What happens when the website crashes? What happens when something happens? What happens when you've lost some motivation, energy? What happens when you get some bad news? What happens, what do you do? This is where most people crumble. This is where most people, as soon as there's one little tiny thing that interrupts them, they're gone. They, they fall off their entire schedule and routine. Your goals suddenly don't matter anymore. You don't think they're possible. Your goals don't count until they're hard. That's what I told them. I said, listen, listen to me. This is a great plan. That life that you wrote, that's a great life. What you wrote down on your calendar, that's a great life for you. That's what you want. Imagine if you did that every day for the next year, how different would your life look like one year from today? If you were consistent on staying like, oh yeah, 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 amazing, amazing, great. Doesn't count until it's hard. None of this matters until it's hard. Life is coming for you. Get ready. And what I want him and I want you to realize is that you need to expect it because you're working your calendar and it's great and here we go, we're getting our, getting our objectives and going for our goals. And then when something hits us in the face, you're surprised by it. You're shocked. And then you fall off course. Don't be surprised, expect it. Expect the difficulty, expect the road bump, expect somebody to punch you in the face. Like expect it, it's coming. And this is your chance to be outstanding because everybody else is gonna be average. Now we got a very special bonus clip that I think you're gonna love. But before that, if you're still watching, we want to celebrate you. If you promise to take action after watching this video, give a hashtag believe in the comment below. We want to celebrate you. Paul Newman, the legendary actor, had an amazing quote that I love to repeat. He said, I check my pulse and if I can find it, I know I've got a chance. You've got a very important choice to make. You either make the rest of your life the best of your life, or you settle for what is and live in your excuses. So you know why I would give up? You know what I'm deeply afraid of? I've got two. I've got a short-term fear and a long-term fear. My short-term fear is of disappointing people. My biggest short-term in the moment fear is disappointing people. That I would show up to an event and let people down. That I wouldn't give them value. That people would come and waste their time, spend their money, and I didn't give them value. I, I'm deeply afraid of it and still am. I put pressure on these videos. I want these videos to be great. Every time I get in front of this camera and start making a video, I put pressure on myself that this needs to be the best video that I've ever done. I want to not disappoint you guys. Every single time, and there's this little pause, hesitation before filming, and I'll, I'll spend a couple minutes procrastinating because I'm, I'm afraid. I'm afraid of disappointing you and making a crappy video. I'll procrastinate, and then I'll do it and I'll feel great <laughs> doing it. But my biggest short-term fear is disappointing people. My biggest long-term fear is of regret, is that I won't live my life, is that I'll look back and say, I could have done more. I, I should have pushed harder. Because you rarely regret the things that you did, it's the things that you didn't do, the things you were too afraid to do, the actions not taken. That's what you normally regret. And so my biggest short-term fear is disappointing people. My biggest long-term fear is fear of regret. And those things, they fight each other. Right? They fight each other because if I'm afraid of disappointing somebody, I'm not going to take the action that I should be taking and then I'm going to regret it later on. And so I try to use that fear of potential regret to push me into action. To say if I don't make videos today, if I don't do that speech, if I don't get up and make that presentation, if I don't do the thing that I'm afraid to do because of disappointing people potentially, then I'll regret it. And I'll put the pressure like this is the video. This video right here, this is the video that's gonna blow up everything. That'll change the whole game for me. And if I don't record it because I'm afraid of disappointing somebody, I'm gonna regret that my whole life. And I make it so painful for myself that then I have to act. And that pain pushes me into action and out of procrastination mode.
If you want to learn how to become the best version of yourself, must check out the video next to me. I think you're gonna enjoy. Much love, Bali. I'll see you there. I think everybody has Michael Jordan level talent at something. You could be the Michael Jordan of something.